We're on season four of Haven at the moment, but what's the news about a potential season five? I don't have any news. <laughs> Tell them, Emily. Emily makes these decisions. Mm -hmm. She's the real boss. Mm -hmm. I'm the woman behind the curtain. Behind the curtain. Um, the news is, you know, we are, I think, as hopeful as ever. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, the our you know numbers have been strong, and and so I don't from behind my desk where I never actually <laughs> you have a sit. Desk? <laughs> I don't see any reason why we wouldn't continue. But as you know, these things you know change for no particular reason at any moment. So that's why we're really we've been really pushing to try and get people to watch live these days and keep the ratings up and pound mm -hmm. sci-fi or well we're in a really cool like or whoever to keep having on the air we're yeah. in a really cool age i think of television with just the whole worldwide interweb as you would call it because fans really make a difference like mm -hmm. you know in the past fans are fantastic and they're great but this is the first, I think, kind of generation of TV watchers mm. where, you know, their presence as a fan base really can make an impact on a network. Um, we've seen that from, you know, shows being brought back because they've really harassed networks to now, you know, the Internet presence of a fan base really speaks volumes. So we're excited to be here at Comic-Con. There's tons of fans, but we also love to get the message out there that, you know, if our fans are vocal and they tell the networks they want us to come back and they spread the word and, you know, check in on Get Glue and they're watching the tell, you know, the series or talk about it with each other or, you know, trend the topic on Twitter or any of those things, that makes a difference. I mean, we get emails regularly saying, "Oh, we trended at this." You know, it really does make a difference. So, yep. You know, yeah. our fans make a difference on whether or not we come back. So in that way, if they think, you know, oh, it's fine, it's coming back, and they maybe not be as vocal, sometimes that can have an effect. So we say even though we're, you know, pretty sure we're coming back and we hope we're coming back, make sure that that happens, you know. Yeah. We yeah. love for the word to get out that they want us back. Absolutely. Is there any uh, ritual when a new cast member joins that you have to do a prank or haze one. a certain <laughs> new ritual. cast member? Uh -huh. What's, the, uh, what's the tricks? That There's... Done? <laughs> Our ritual consists of coming into the trailer every single morning and just going at it. What does that mean? Would you like to that Verbally going at it. Mm -hmm. Just downloading about yes. everything uh, in life. Uh, mm -hmm. You just come in and it's like you start the day and you can start the day. If you, it's inevitably, I would say the ritual is, you know, a new cast member comes in and whatever our energy is as a cast in the morning, it just we attack that person mm -hmm. with that energy, whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. they get That's what I mean on. by going mm -hmm. at it. Like they come into the trailer and mm -hmm. we either, if we're in like the best, most hyper mood ever, they're going to get that full force. Mm -hmm. The boys will just start hugging on them repeatedly. And... Yeah, we're pretty well, we're, we're pretty immediately welcoming. Mm -hmm. Maybe overwhelmingly so. Yeah. Like I think people are, yeah, a overwhelmed. Little, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> wonder a little what they've gotten themselves because into. Thankfully, they grow to enjoy us. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah. I've said this before in interviews, but I'll say it again. We film on the edge of nowhere, it feels like. Yeah. Not that Nova Scotia is nowhere, but it feels like that sometimes. And so whenever anyone comes in from the outside, we're like, hello, right. tell us of the food you have eaten in the faraway land. Mm -hmm. What is it like out there? <laughs> right. What news you bring. We have, what news you bring <laughs> from the Shire. So you really are like a little small town yourselves. <laughs> Abs yes. Absolutely, you know, and there is, and then they have such, you know, they're usually coming from somewhere relatively far away. So there is the whole culture shock of being in this little world that we shoot in. Um, so. I have a story about that. Not now. I can tell you later. Tell me later. No, I'm tell him now. Tell him now. I know. I just didn't want to interrupt you because I keep on talking. And I was going to... Yep. Go ahead. No, Emily. go ahead. And there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go ahead, Emily. Okay. 
Uh, Emily has a story about about another that. sci-fi person, mm-hmm. Colin Ferguson from Eureka. Uh-huh. Okay, right. I've done many of you know event with Colin, and I tell him all the time, "Yes, we film in a really small town. We're out in the middle of nowhere." And he kind of would be like, ah. yeah. "Right, good line." He came to join us this season, obviously, and I, the first email slash an email which turned into a phone call on the phone. He literally said to me. I, I don't know where, like, literally, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Like, am I really, I, I could we be five minutes? I don't know. I don't know where I am. And I just started laughing at him because he's given me such a hard time for so long mm-hmm. about that, like, yeah, it's hard filming on location. It's mm. hard. But literally, he was We only in, have one restroom. Yeah, he, he woke up and he <laughs> was like, you guys only have one. And we're like, yes, we know, Colin, yeah. we're aware. Welcome mm-hmm. to Haven. Yeah. It's really fun. That's kind of an initiation in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Emily, how much fun have you had playing Lexi and Audrey, or should I say Laudry? Laudry. And um, uh, Lucas, how has it felt having a, a new side, William, come into that relationship between Audrey and Nathan? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can answer. No, you. I've been talking too much. You can answer, I answer your question, your question? first. We could, yeah, let's trade answers. Um, no, how does it feel to have a new... Um, hmm. Well... It, uh, I mean, it's it's great for someone, for Nathan to have someone to, um, yeah, I guess I can't say exactly what our, the nature of our relationship is yet, but to have, uh, have, um, other characters involved in his tiny little world. I thought you were um, going to say brain. Tiny little brain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um. And in the same way, I guess for me, you know, just as as the the person Lucas, that's not the character. Uh, it's really nice to have Colin around. He's a great guy and a pleasure to have on set. A total ass and a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, I would say it's been a lot of fun playing Laudry, um, Lexi, and well, not so much playing. Laudry. Laudry kind of drives me nuts. And that is to say when the two are like going this way, like it's kind of crazy because I I think I fought pretty hard throughout the season to really clearly say, who is this right now? Who is this right now? You know, are we going to make it clear to the fans? Are we? Uh, so for the first four episodes, it was really fun playing Lexi. I mean, she, um, especially episode five, which I think just aired here. It was when um, Lexi comes into Haven, and uh, it was directed by a great new director we had this year, Rick Boda. 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 Mm-hmm. And um, he, we just had a lot of fun because he would pull me aside and he'd say, like, let's do something fun with Lexi and that, you know, how can she get on Nathan's nerves more and more and more. And so that was fun for me to play because... I was like, I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get into his personal space because, you know, here he's dealing with the fact that Audrey's around, but she's not around. And so the comedic side of Lexi was really fun to play. Just, I, I would try things. And instead of people saying like, oh, no, take it down a notch, they'd be like, great. You know, you can just be bigger and more out there. Um, but it is a little tricky finding my way back to Audrey and feeling like she's clear because I feel like, you know, she has Lexi so much on top of her now in so many ways. So that was a little tricky. Um, but I tried to add so many layers to Lexi that as Audrey begins to be reintroduced to Haven, some of those things come off, um, like her nose rings or the, her hair or the different types of her clothes that you sort of see her kind of blend back into her hair falls off. Yeah, it, it comes out <laughs> in the, the next episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a trouble, a balding trouble. I heard you um, fought for that nose ring as well. I did, and I won. <laughs> well, tell them about tell them tell them the one about tell them about how the tell them tell them the story when uh, when you show them, when you show them the picture. Oh or, right, well that's that exciting. Not allowed to be told. I, I think like, I've, I, t- I know, no, I, I've, t- I've told it anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, so, it. no, I haven't, I think I've said it, I can't remember who I said it to, but it was really funny because, you know, coming back, first of all, I had just had a baby like six weeks prior, so it was all sort of, I think everybody was kind of 
concerned is a nice word to say uh we have no clue what she's going to look like after she has this baby and so what are we going to do character wise and so it was really fun to play lexi and just have a completely different look altogether. and uh, as you know, our offices, our main offices are in L.A. We also have some offices in Toronto and we shoot in Nova Scotia. So our production network studio, all that's kind of spread out across the continent. Um, so I don't exactly get to see everyone um, before we start shooting. So we were starting up the season. They were developing the look for Lexi. We, you know, tried on a bunch of wardrobe and... Uh, came up with some photos and, you know, went through hair and makeup of it, of what we thought looked really, really good and uh, sent that off. And everybody was like, awesome, looks fantastic. Now we just want to see this on Emily. And we were, everybody was like, it is Emily. <laughs> and they were all, wait a second, no way, you know, which was a, such a compliment to the transformation that had happened. Also was a little bit disconcerting, like, you don't know who I am, this is me. But it was really, really cool to actually have you know, created an entirely new look and to be so disguised, you know, as an actor, that's one of my favorite things is to try to not trick people, but to try to make them, you know, pull them into a story. So the fact that we had done that with our own people was, was exciting. Mm -hmm. Was that the one? That was the one I wanted. That was good. So good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now tell them about it. <laughs> I did fight for the nose ring, though. There was a little character I played when I got my Taft heart lead, which is the first little step you get when you become SAG, and she was a little low-rent sort of bar tender rat, and she had, you know, really short blonde hair and a nose ring, and I really liked her, and I didn't ever feel like I got to play her. So when they sort of pitched this character to me, I thought, I think she would have, you know, we want something very distinct. When you look at these people, when you take snapshots of each of these characters from Audrey's life you want to know who that that's her and so that was something and I said I really think people will like I don't think it'll be too much no but I really think and I just kept fighting and they let it they let it through just to see you know what network thought and network loved it so I got to keep it boom boom <laughs> yeah that's right it, Mike, it was a victory down. Yeah. it was <laughs> just out of interest the show's obviously based on the Stephen King novel has he put any notes down about or is he actually, do you know if he's ever watched the show yet? Or has he kept himself away from a distance? I don't know if he, he's watched it. He talks to Emily most days, but not me. Yeah. <laughs> what does he say? Yeah. He actually called before, no. Um, he, he's calling, He's actually. calling now. He actually called your mom. He's, my mom said yeah. that Stephen really <laughs> likes the show. Um, now, we got, we, we know that Sam and Jim, the creators of the show, got a uh, lovely message from him when they started, you know, with his best wishes and congratulations and, um, and support. And that meant a lot to them. They're huge fans of his. And um, and he's basically let, I mean, he's let them do with his material what, what they would. And we're trying to get him in, I think, mm -hmm. to do a cameo perpetually. Yeah. There's an open invitation. Mm -hmm. It would be very cool. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't, he doesn't. He doesn't really have an ongoing relationship with uh, how the show's progressing. I don't think he tweets either, so I don't really have a way to get in contact with him. Is, is that why you'll, you'll get so many intertextual references, all the other sort of bits of his universe that they like to mention, like Shawshank and so forth? Mm -hmm. is, is it because they've got that open relationship, that, that sort of relationship, that thanks from him to play with the world? I, I think so, yeah. And just because they're, they're huge fans, they and and we have a bunch of huge fans in the writer's room. And I think the Easter eggs now are like mostly Nick and Brian's doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's something I think that uh, we've tried to, you know, it's it, when the show began and it is, it is, it's, it's a spin off of the world from Stephen King. And so we have his blessing and we do realize that we are, you know, that we mention him quite frequently in reference to the show. So you, you want to do him justice and you, you know, it's, we have a large fan base of people that are fans of his work. So it's kind of a, a fun added bonus for people that really read all of his literature to be able to go through and note everything. Right. And there's so much stuff in there that is like, um, there's so many parallels and from, from very obvious ones to completely, um, theoretical, Sort of parallels that I couldn't even begin to talk about because I don't have a clue. But as you know, you know he's got so much 
um, material out there. Uh, his real fans, his his big fans, I think would have a lo- have a lot of fun mining Haven for that. Mm-hmm. So. When Lucas and the guys were over last October, they said that um, you had a bit of a tough time on set being surrounded by a bunch of lads who make silly jokes. I'm in therapy. I'm in therapy as a result. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. What did you say? We said. What, we, did, you, what did you say? Uh, well, I, I do believe you said that she made her first dirty joke that year. Oh yeah, that right. I won. That's right. That's right. That we I did. Won. We said that. We said that you had that you were basically like the girl surrounded by a bunch of oh, guys right, that yeah. are making like juvenile yeah jokes the story most of, of my the life. time. Uh huh. But that you had really come a long way. In fact, <laughs> last last year. You oh that I've begun to joke like mm-hmm. you yeah talk mm-hmm. as a native. You've student, come a long way, like sort of degressing to. The thing is, is I like to keep a low profile on set. A low profile. I'm an observer. There's a lot of things I could what say. Are you? <laughs> There's a lot of things I could this say and I should say. All. It is this so is true. Not. You don't even know. <laughs> I don't. You don't know. I don't even um, know. No, but I I do thoroughly enjoy shock factor as well, but it's in reverse. <laughs> like the boys like to, like especially Eric likes to shock me with stuff and likes to see if I how I'm going to react. And I like the reverse shock factor, which is just keeping it low for a really long time and then sending out a zinger to yeah. which they get the long- stunned. Long and con. you see them, yes, the very Three years long she con. held that one. Like, <laughs> nailed them. He was like, yeah. his head exploded. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. No, but I made a joke, I think, recently about how I just spend my days on set going like this. <laughs> yeah. I consider myself a refuge for the outsiders that come in and get, you know, berated by the energy. I'm like, if you want to join in, feel free. But if you need a place to call home, come <laughs> over and hang out. <laughs> They'll be okay. No, but we really have a really good time. So. Yeah, but it is not, it's not, um, it's, it's not very academic kind of <laughs> place yeah, to work. Yeah, not so much. No. Although we would really support that if we had an academic come to Haven yeah. and, and wanted to, <laughs> you know, pursue their studies on set they could that would be fine but they would just have to deal with a lot of you know it is jokes it's funny you know i think i was the kind of girl growing up where i i hate to say it but i didn't have a ton of girlfriends anyway like i tended to like gel more with guys in general like i just got their humor kind of was more of a tomboy and enjoyed that company more because it was just less drama or so i thought um (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, so man. so I feel kind of I feel at home it's like the brothers I never had I do have a brother mm. he's younger than me anyway mm-hmm. yeah the yeah. brothers the, the that I didn't have yeah had. I have a great yeah. brother so mm-hmm. yeah is there anything you guys want to see for your characters something that hasn't happened yet that you would like to have a, a crack at get the writers to write it for you and off you go ooh here's your sh- stuff <laughs> um, just stuff. Mm. That's there are there are all sorts of things, um, but that's a really hard question to answer because I've I've thought myself like what would I, you know, okay, I'm gonna go sit down with them and talk about what I really want to see and what do I want to see. I, I I have a hard time answering that, but I guess. Um, I guess I would like uh I'd like to see a um I'd like to see some I'd like to explore some more of Nathan's history. Mhm. Um some of I think there are all sorts of story possibilities in, you know, his dad, his mom, what happened to his dad, what happened to his mom, his adoption. Um but I don't know if those are you know, I mean, selfishly, I would love to to do that. I don't know if that is what the show is supposed to be necessarily, um, but but I don't really know. I think it's I think it's going to be tricky. We have knowing where we end this season. Um, mm-hmm. From my perspective, going into next season with a, I'm going to need a fresh um, set of eyes. I think. I think um, Nathan needs a bit of a uh, 
reevaluation of things and he's he's I would I would like to see him like have a big um personality shift or um yeah I'd like to see a big change in him. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I don't know how long we can, you know. What well, what are you saying? Uh, well, I can't say <laughs> <about that. laughs> what it is i think it's funny that he said that though because i feel like when people ask me that question i tend to usually go to the nathan camp of things like i feel like he's a huge question mark which is such a great like piece of the haven puzzle i think that that's a lot of the um allure of who nathan is as a person but i always have said like i'd like to see his like apartment or where he lives you know and we get a glimpse we just recently got we get a glimpse of that sort of but like barely two seconds of it and um i'd like to kind of i would think it'd be kind of cool to see like different points of view from you know because we're always sort of attacking a trouble but i think the way that maybe like vince and dave view haven or the way that like Nathan's day and like how he does like I think that would kind of like an interesting spin yeah on things and um I also think there's just a layer of mythology that we sort of held up season one with Lucy and uh the chief and um you know Nathan as a little boy and Duke as a little boy and that sort of 1983-esque version of Haven that sort of supported the whole first season to me it is very interesting and I'd love to kind of give that some more weight or delve into that more. Oh, I just wanted to say from a story like other than specifically character perspective from a story perspective I would love to see I think all of us would like to see um, you know less less concern about the trouble of the week in mm -hmm. general and more you know um maybe a, a new way to approach episodes whether that's you know a day in the life of a certain character or whether that's more time travel but more exploring that mythology mm -hmm. in general rather you know um and and weaving in maybe the trouble that they're dealing with but having it focus less on that case 